Welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel for our continued coverage of Aduro Clean Technology. This video is going to be inspired by Green Investing. It was a um, tips to investing article that I came uh, about, and I'm going to share that for you guys. The, those of you who don't follow me on X, you're going to want to kick over there, follow me. Uh, I share these as they are shared with me uh, through my community on X. And it is important to understand different perspectives about uh, different investing ideas that we talk about. This one really stuck with me. Um, this really pointed out some things that I would have more uh, taken as 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 bearish, um, uh, maybe more negative, um, maybe criticisms of specifically a, a duro that I have made in the past, and and maybe. Um, they were slightly ill-advised in doing so. Uh, as I read through the article, it became very apparent to me that where I might look at something as a constructive negative on a company, and by the admission in the article, there are no perfect companies out there, and the checklist to um, Green Investing's philosophy about investing kind of outlies um, the, the the specifics about investing in the microcap space, those companies that could fall anywhere uh, under the $300 million market cap range and, and why the optics or the um, impression that a lot of people have about investing in the space uh, carries with it somewhat of a negative connotation. But I wanted to share with you guys my uh, perspective uh, in af after reading and, and the reaction that I got out of it, because a, a lot of what Green Investing talked about in the article and didn't name Aduro Clean Technologies directly, and I will not um, make that connection as to whether or not that um, Aduro Clean Technology met this checklist. Um, I, I know where Green Investing's loyalty lies, and 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 I can make my presumptions, but I, I will not speak for. Uh, the intentions of the article speaking toward or for or in support of a specific company, rather just putting some interesting perspectives out there that fly in the face of societal norms uh, as far as um, investing in what you know, uh, investing in companies that everybody knows about, um, investing in companies that have a wide range of access to those companies. And I want to go over a few of these highlights, but because I think this can it can really come full circle for you guys in understanding where potentially um, my loyalty lies with my particular holding and and my relationship with the Duro Clean Technologies and why every video that I come out with, I try to do these every week to provide value and provide substantiation behind the, um, the the project but I I, I do these videos I, I am paid by Aduro clean technologies for you guys that do follow me know that those full disclaimers are provided for you as well as my current share position um, I have done nothing over the last couple of years but uh, build a position in Aduro uh, north of north of 110 115 thousand shares in the company. And um, my conviction only grows in the company. Uh, this article really helps solidify um, my place in this um, this arena uh, for investing in small companies, which a lot of people won't touch. A lot of people, you know, would um, would not even look at a company like Aduro or 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 not even know about it. I think is probably more realistic. But I want to go down these bullet points and I want to kind of talk about how prior to reading the article, I actually looked at some of these as negative or green investing actually identifies these as, as net positives for not only the company, but, uh, but the investing thesis that's outlined. Uh, nobody knows about the company. I was hired on to provide awareness uh, services for a DuroClean technology. Uh, I do have uh, you know, a, a YouTube channel that is well established with a well established audience, and it, it helps when we're looking to present new investment ideas to an established audience, those that would or potentially have uh, interest in um, the investing topic as a whole. 
uh, or are interested in uh, ideas uh, like this in the microcap space that they can cover, take as an introduction, uh, uh, potentially research it and find out whether or not it fits for you. But with nobody knowing about the company, I always thought about this as a negative. And I always thought, man, if people could just find out about this company, what what could come of it? You know, what that notoriety would bring, you know, how that could potentially uh, really bring some significant awareness to the stock. And there's been some really big YouTube channels that have covered the company uh, and some really, really good news that has been released over the last couple of years, quite frankly, to no avail. And, and the company has failed to move. I, I think it proves over and over and over again that this company um, will need to follow through on a couple of things. And I'll provide that in the summary at the end of these points. But to look at nobody knows about the company and 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 me initially looking at it and saying, man, I've got to spread the word on this company could actually be a net positive if you look at it from the investor's perspective and the opportunity to get in on the stock sub $1 US right here. You know, you look at the upside potential that could be in front of us based on some of the items that we're going to talk about in this video. And I, I think you can come full circle in understanding that perspectives vary and where someone might look at, look, look at a company like Adaduro and not look twice, um, I, you know, where others might look at it and say, wow, this meets all of the criteria in what I'm looking for. Yeah, it, it, it's it's backing a topic that I am glad to support with regard to, um, you know, lowering carbon emissions and providing solutions to tackle the plastic problem. Uh, but that's only part of the problem. Your conviction can only take you so far in providing yourself a holistic idea of whether or not you want to take an investment or not. But Green Investing did a good idea of talking about bracketing companies below three hundred million. And there's a couple of things here that uh, is highlighted in the um, checklist to investing criteria um, that the author looks for in, in a company. And one of those things was being illiquid. Very little volume and very low liquidity. And he goes on to talk about how those companies that seemingly trade very little to no volume $50,000 or less in a lot of cases actually turn back the majority of profit and have all going back uh, significant in uh, a couple of decades when you're looking at the historical precedents that are set by these companies um, that are illiquid and don't trade a lot of shares during the day. I always looked at it as a net negative and, and, and the uh, article seems to kind of fly in the face of that, suggest that, goodness, that's actually what you want to look for uh, as an investor when you're looking to maybe potentially take a, a, an ownership stake in a company, as opposed to take a, an ownership stake in something that everybody already knows about. The next is low institutional ownership. Um, my friend Mariusz has talked about this, uh, Mariusz Konichnia. He's a featured channel of mine. And he's talked about this a lot with regard to institutional uh, investors not having access to a DuraClean technology. That is true. Uh, I, I, I look at it, it twofold. For me, it's great because I think when institutions do have a chance to grab a hold of this, I think the stock is going to fly. And, and to actually have a first mover advantage on an opportunity like this only speaks to the bullish thesis in that I have time to build my position. Uh, before the floodgates are opened up. And, and I think that is a net positive when you look at it from that perspective. Um, I, I think eventually the institutions will need to step in, but by that time I will have had my position um, uh, put forward first and, and have those shares settled and, and, and ready to go once that institutional buying starts to happen. The revenue growth potential is the one that stuck out to me, and this is the one that garners the most debate on Aduro. When people would uh, suggest that it's not investable because they don't have meaningful revenue, this is the most bearish point that actually is part of my bearish thesis on a company that I own stock in, a Dural Clean Technologies I own stock in. But that does not mean that I can't look at the company and, and say, "Man, it would be nice if they were turning out 
even 10, 20, 30, 50 million dollars of revenue. I think that is going to grow over time with the uh, customer engagements, especially as they keep some of those customers in house and look to establish a, a certain number of collaborators with a Dura look. My thing is, I sit back and here's my discretionary aspect. You can take this for what you will. If a Dura clean technology is so revolutionary or as revolutionary as we say that it is, then they shouldn't have any problem knocking down clients to be interested in the program, furthermore, to build them into collaborators. Because Aduro is not going to make money if they can't establish a good client base on the onset. And to my knowledge right now, they are in the customer engagement program and have announced no collaborative deals as this video is being produced. So we may look at this five years from now and say, man alive, Ryan was reporting out on this company when they had really no established agreements with these uh, companies that they're you know, showcasing their uh, technology to, uh, but there has been no signed agreement as far as bringing on collaborators and, and, and bringing on uh, lifetime customers because they are just blown away by the technology. They say that we should be blown away by the technology. I'm invested in the company for the technology. But how is that going to be leveraged into generating revenue? And this is one of those things that if you're looking at companies, their potential to gain revenue, if this thing was knocking down $100 million of revenue uh, every single year, we would not be talking about a dollar stock here, guys. We'd be talking about a $12.50 stock. Okay, but, but as we speak now, it's worth noting the earnings potential of Aduro um, through their licensing model, through their infrastructure model, and, and what they're looking to do. And that's just along one vertical, okay? Uh, so, you know, I think at any time, any one of these verticals could pop with a piece of good news that could actually uh, leapfrog their revenue into the multi-millions. But that just has not happened yet. And I still chalk it up as an area for a Duro that they do need to work on. The next is the margins need to look for companies that have the ability to either license their technology or have a competitive enough moat to where companies want to um, pay for the use of that or to assist in the building of the infrastructure long term so that a company like Aduro can sport some higher than average margins. Green investing talks about a 40% margin as a criteria that uh, is is sought after in, in an investment thesis. I think that's smart. Aduro checks that box as far as that, that goes. Um, but to look at the margins as one of those things that um, um, uh, is, is sought out in an investing thesis. The next is management ownership. This is something that really gets missed in the Aduro story. I think it's unfortunate. I think that people really don't acknowledge that just over half of the available shares are available for purchase right now. And they're available for purchase from a class of investors, i.e. retail investors, that do not have the capital to move the stock in and of itself with these purchases. Okay, The micro positions that I have are not going to move the stock. All right, There's not a lot of volume traded per day. I talked about that. But Institutions own 42% of this company, uh, excuse me, management. So if management is um, willing to put their own money to work, or let's just say if they're not willing to put their money to work, then why should I? That's kind of the philosophy. And this company is owned by upper management. 42% of the co company is owned by, by management. And I, I think that is something that we need to continue to double down on and 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 emphasize that we're not in this alone, okay? There's nobody that has a vested interest in seeing this happen uh, than the upper management who is invested right alongside of us. And, and I think that's worth discussing. And I, I, I certainly believe that anybody who's covering the story needs to acknowledge how important that is in talking about this story. And the last thing I'll mention is the moat through patents. We have talked endlessly about the Aduro story, what the technology renders, 
comparatively speaking across the industry. Look, guys, I'm not saying Pure Cycle is not a good company. I, I have not my, done my due diligence. What I know is that they render results that are less than 50% uh, on, on the return on their uh, on their technology. And, and when Aduro comes out and on multiple occasions says that they can support 95% return, it only tells me that their technology is far and away the more superior product. Furthermore, to get that 95%, Aduro's energy input is not even close to what a company like PureCycle, uh, the sports uh, paralysis, which is the, the governing technology that is uh, applied to plastic recycling right now, which requires a high energy input. And, and a very low output uh, to, 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 to look at the technology and suggest that we can't improve upon that. Or companies like Adura that don't support or, or support a technology that uh, boasts a 95% uh, recovery rate on the plastic feedstock is, is, is really interesting to, to look at and, and not be able to award a Duro a competitive advantage and dare I suggest a moat in, in applying their technology. They've talked about adding a couple more patents to uh, their patent portfolio this year, and we will continue to be patient on that front, and we will report out on those uh, developments as they happen. Guys, I really appreciate you uh, tuning in to this weekly update. This was made possible by Green Investing. Uh, so full credit, uh, I've already posted that link to um, my my Twitter account. So kick over there. You can read the uh, uh, the article checklist to investing. Uh, I'll also share that in the description below as well as in the comment section for your ease of reference. Uh, it's a quick read. It'll take you five minutes, but certainly update you on a, a different perspective on why this could make a lot more sense to people if they would just give it a first look, look at it from an objective lens, look what they're trying to do, look at the market they're going after, look at that revenue growth potential that I talked about, which is growing with their customer engagement. I just think that they need to get a little bit more assistance in that category before they're going to be taken seriously. And I think until that happens, Unfortunately, with the low volume in the stock and people still question the story, um, the, the stock is going to be stuck where it is right now, and I'm totally fine with that. Um, but I appreciate you guys tuning into the video, guys. If you enjoy the content coming through in these weekly updates on Aduro, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video, man. Hit the notification bell. You'll be notified of future content that I put on YouTube. As usual, I appreciate you guys, and good luck in your investment future. 